Door Mail, home of a great night's sleep. My husband and the kids were outside absolutely howling with laughter. And eventually, after 20 minutes of really kind of, you know, giving it all, giving the cougar thing to, to this lovely young man, he was gorgeous, um, came back and I said, so what's so funny? And Ed just said to me, Emma, you've got no trousers on. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> How is everybody? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Um, my shower, you don't know, remember about I, I said a few months ago about my shower head and how I had to scrub it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it actually it did last quite a long time, but now the shower head is gone kaput. Completely kaput. So I had to get Sam to come and look after it and sort it out. Sam the plumber, who was Thank brilliant, you. I have to say. But you know, <laughs> hey ho. At least I, I, don't I, things, I, I salvaged think, it for a year. I don't think things could get more exciting, more <laughs> riveting. <laughs> yeah, for a Tuesday afternoon. That is absolutely sunny. I mean, I'm sure you know, Ed and, um, and Sam, <coughs> the, thank you. That and scrubbing the floor with um, soda crystals. Too much, too much, too much. <laughs> <laughs> Please, somebody else. No. Anybody. <laughs> I want to just mention something because I, not only me, but I've had it from a few friends of mine, how difficult it is to see a doctor now. Mm. I mean, we've all paid our taxes all our lives and you cannot get a one-to-one -one with a doctor. <coughs> I mean, you, you can ring. Uh, you can't blame the receptionist because they're under the strict thing of, no, you cannot book a patient in. They can only have a phone consultation. You get the phone consultation and the phone consultation with the doctor will say, OK, I think you've got this, this and this. So if you go away and you do this or you buy that and, and that's it. And you go, well, how, well, hang on, wait a minute. And they go, well, but we can't see you at the moment. So I, a friend of mine was quite seriously ill well she felt very ill and she couldn't get in and she she found another doctor and then eventually she had to pay for a doctor to, yeah. to be able to to see somebody mm. and I just think what has happened to this country why can't I mean even now she rang somebody today and they said uh no no you can only have another phone consult she said but I don't want to I want to see somebody I need somebody to reassure me that I'm okay yeah uh, no, can't do that. Can't do that. You know, so, Sherry, in, in the papers this week, there was something about that, where they said that before lockdown, 80% of people were seen by their doctors. When lockdown started, it went down to something like under 40%. And mm. it has not gone up since yeah. the lockdown yeah. has been lifted. Because the mm -hmm. doctors feel, now this is an interesting twist on it, that they can mm -hmm. see, see more patients by seeing them remotely. And it's better right. that way. And I think that's a load of bollocks, personally. Maybe we have to prioritise, you know, we have to yeah. say, yeah. Yeah. if your symptoms are this, then you go to the top of the queue, if you like. Yeah. If you have a cold and a cough, well, I will give you a phone call, and, you know, but they want their chest to be heard and everything. Yeah. So I, I don't, I know there was a problem because we've all been in waiting rooms where there's been, it's been full. <laughs> and wait you know a good hour an hour and a half and you cut I get that <clears throat> but when you've got symptoms and they go oh okay actually that's not good uh go to the chemist and tell them and then you go to the chemist and they go well I can't give you things over the counter that okay. I can't do yeah. that you have to get a prescription you can't get a prescription unless you see a doctor I mean it's completely catch-22 now mm -hmm. And I think it's appalling in this country, absolutely appalling. My friend, who also had something wrong with her, she actually, she does go to Spain a lot, but she actually went over to Spain and saw the doctor over there. That's and he great. saw her, examined her, and gave her mm -hmm. the tablets she needed. What's that all about? I think we have to look at a bigger picture, is that the whole of the National Health Service is under terrible duress and is being run down and there has also been stuff in the papers this week about the fact that we are trying to be pushed into private 
medication. I, I honestly mm -hmm. believe that now, from what yeah. I've experienced. Yes, it is you true. Know, because if you go to a dentist now, oh. what does it cost? So it's yeah, even on an a NHS dentist for a filling or yeah. Everything. It's unbelievable. Nobody it can costs. afford it. Nobody. No. It's outrageous. So anyway, on that doom and gloom, <laughs> can we move on please, to some happiness and bring in some guests? Yes. Yes. yes let's absolutely. do that. Well, we've got really two fabulous guests today, which are Emma Skeets, who has written a, a fantastic best-selling book on the menopause, and the wonderful, wonderful Sarah Parrish, and they do a bit of a double act on the menopause, on <laughs> National Menopause Month. <laughs> Somebody oh needs God. to. <laughs> Bring him in. Hi. 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 <laughs> How are you? Pretty well, thank you. How are you? Insane. Good. All the better for seeing you, darling. Oh, I didn't get, look at you all in pink. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Why did it, it wasn't planned, you know, it wasn't planned. Mine's orange. Is it? It looks pink. It looks pink. Yeah. It does. <laughs> I it think it's not pink, actually. You know, mine's a nicer colour than pink. I have oh, to say. Oh, here, here we go. Uh, here here we go. Is it, well, I don't know what you'd call it. Sort of a pale violet, isn't it, or something? I don't really I'm know. Pale violet, darling. Yes. No. So, Emma, how did all of this come to happen? Tell us all about it. Well, um, it's all. I'm, I'm what they refer to, I think, as the happy accident. Um, in the, um, absolutely nothing that I've done ever in my life has ever gone according to plan. So, um, yeah, yeah, from from beginning to end, really, um, when I think about it. Um, but no, the blog started um, because I was so sick to death of perfection and people trying to sort of put their lives out there um, as perfect. Um, as we were talking a, bit, a little bit earlier on about the fact that um, when my children were very, very tiny, my um, my husband um, phoned me on his way to work one day and said, um, I'm not coming back. And my response was, um, the um, traffic on the M25 that bad? <laughs> and I did not get it at all. But the worst thing was, is he said, no, no, I'm never coming back. And I said, geez, it's that bad. <laughs> <laughs> and he's still didn't drop. And so, yeah, I kind of got sort of whisked into this whirlwind where, you know, I had this life plan and it all went tits up, basically. Um, but as life kind of went on and it became more and more hilarious, I realised it was OK. And so I started to write about it and it kind of resonated with people. And a few years after that, I went into I had to have a hysterectomy. Um, and went into the menopause and became even more insane, if that was even vaguely possible. <laughs> and and that, that was when I kind of got chatting to Sarah because um, Sarah and I have a mutual friend and the thing with the menopause, and, and is, is it all right if we talk about the menopause? Because it's national. Yeah, menopause month. of course. Yeah. But what I wanted to say was, you know, we, we got chatting about it because, it, you know, there is an awful lot of doom and gloom that surrounds it. And actually, and, and I get it, I get that lots of women suffer. Um, and I was one of them. When I went into the surgical menopause, it was like sort of going down the crest to run in a, in a, on a, one of those old Jamaican sort of, um, sort of cart <laughs> and bang into this brick wall and lunacy just hits you like a, like a shovel. But actually some of it's really, really funny. And, and as an example, um, you know, the, there are so many things that come with it that to, uh, today, just so you guys know, is National Craft Disease Day. Have you ever heard of that? <laughs> no, no. No, no, I mean, it, what it, does it, that mean? Well, it's, it, it's, it's really tricky because it hits you. It's sort of part of the menopause. And it's like craft as in art and craft, you know, the kind of thing you used to pretend to do when you were doing with your kids, when you were swigging bottles of Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> um, but yeah, cra craft disease means can't remember a thing. Ah, and, and that has life. brought me out of so many difficulties, I can't tell you, from taking the dog to the vet, um, getting to the counter, and I've forgotten the dog. The dog is at home. Um, <laughs> I, did that with my, I did that with my daughter. <clears throat> you took your daughter okay, you to win. the vet? you win. <laughs> oh, my God. No, no, I, I took her. We, I'm sure we've all done this, actually. The, the first baby that you have, I just took her to the shops, and then came home, obviously, because it's the first time I'd ever taken her out. And I kept thinking, there's something missing. And, and my husband said to me, where's the baby? And I went, oh, God, I left her outside the shop. 
Oh my God. No. You all do this. No. no. <laughs> that's good. That's good. You've completely topped me. But that that's part of the whole menopause thing is that your your memory leaves the building. Um, I mean, the, there are so many things. I, I mean, one of the things that you, you, you tend to interact an awful lot with the police. I mean, I've reported my car stolen. Yeah, me too. I've done that. Yeah, yeah, I've done that. Driven to school, walked home, um, driven the husband's car to the te to Tesco, reported your car stolen, done that. Actually, on, on one occasion, and it's in one of my books, that I could not find my way to Tesco. Now, how can you forget to find your <laughs> Tesco? I mean, that's where you buy your wine. <laughs> yeah. I had to pull over with the old hazard lights on. Um, and and, and, and fortunately, because at the time I was working in road safety, um, I knew the copper um, and he pulled over and said, oh dear, oh dear, we have to, let's give you a little, little escort at home and it's not a problem. Oh but, my yeah. gosh. So, the, the, so how the, did you how did you two come together to talk about the menopause? I know you have a mutual friend, but obviously um, you were going through similar stuff, Sarah. Yes, I was. I mean, not anywhere near as hilarious as Emma's. Um, <laughs> but we, because uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you've read the book, but some of it's some of it is absolutely it's, it's uh, hysterical. It is. Um, but we came to meet because, well, um, we've got a friend, haven't we, called Nick? And um, I think Nick put us in touch ages and ages ago. And then uh, Emma does her own thing on Facebook. And uh, and she got in touch with me and she said, look, you know, we're about the same age. Have you got anything you'd like to talk, you know, talk, would you like to talk about menopause, basically? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I really would, because it's never spoken about. It isn't all doom and gloom, you know, if you can, if you can get on top of it quickly enough, it's quite, you know, there are some very, very amusing stuff, things that have happened between Emma and I because of the menopause. Uh, anyway, so we did a little thing on Facebook, didn't we? Uh, which was quite funny, uh, went down quite well. And, um, and ju just sort of swapping stories about, you know, wanting to kill people, Sherry's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always felt that though, haven't you, darling? Yeah, oh, yes, oh, yes, not yes. Not <laughs> Forgetting to put clothes on, you know, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> Do you, do you think, do you think, girls, that it's a, a genetic thing? Because my, my mother, um, about, uh, you know, got up whenever it was, when she was sort of in her late 40s, early 50s, said to me, darling, I, I had the menopause yesterday. And I went, oh, did you? And she said, yes, I got very hot, took all my clothes off, and I feel fine today. And she never mentioned it again. So let's <laughs> fast forward 20 years later. I'm in Edinburgh doing something at the Edinburgh Festival. I have literally this thing. I'm so hot. I take all my clothes off. I think, this is it. And that was it. Same. That thing. was it. We both had the daily menopause, me, me and my mother. Honestly. I Nothing love that. Sense. The daily menopause. I mean, it's a, it's a great paper. We've all read it. Uh, <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? I mean, he, he, you see, my mum never, ever mentioned it. She never mentioned the menopause. I never saw her mood change. I do remember once us coming into the drive my dad used to sit in the car and when we went came home into the drive he'd always go home again home again jiggity jig every single time <laughs> and there was one time that my mum turned around to me and he said she said if he says that one more time I'm gonna kill him <laughs> <laughs> and she and I just sort of went because she was so mild-mannered but she really yeah. meant it she, I think that was her menopause day yeah yeah, <laughs> the daily menopause. The daily menopause. And my mother never had any hot flushes. I've never had any of anything. Hot flushes, anything. No, nothing at all. So I know I'm. I know I'm one of the lucky ones. I probably have all the mood swings and everything else, but without all the physical symptoms. You've got to use it as your cast iron alibi for everything. You know. I mean. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it, it is literally your get out of jail free card. I I <laughs> I, I was telling um, Dee the other day about. Um, chatting up a, um, a random man on the green outside our house who my husband had duped me into thinking was Jamie Dornan. It wasn't him at all. I just didn't <laughs> want to him. And because I realized I'd been done over by my husband, I, you know, I had him <laughs> quite close up. I thought, you know what? I'm gonna throw my all at this guy just to wind my husband up. And my husband and the kids were outside absolutely howling with laughter. 
And eventually after 20 minutes of really kind of, you know, giving it all, giving the cougar thing to the, you know, to, to this lovely, rather attractive, very, very strong North, Northern Irish accent, young man, he was gorgeous, um, came back and I said, so what's so funny? I think he rather liked it. What's so funny? <laughs> and Ed just said to me, Emma, you've got no trousers on. <laughs> that would have been fine it would have all been good had I not looked down and realized I was wearing the menopause pants now have you seen oh, yeah. they, they, seriously they double up as a kite I mean in a yeah. strong wind on a skateboard an easterly wind I'd make it to Eastbourne oh no not Emma <laughs> I mean they came up to here for god's sake how did, how oh, did man. you feel a bit cold? Did you realise you didn't have any trousers on? No, I mean, this is, this is the thing. When you're having a hot flush, everything. <laughs> you know, you oh, probably man. just forgot to put them on. You forgot to put them on, didn't you? Well, and, and, and okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw the, the, the kitchen sink in. I had ankle socks on. That oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It Not was slippers hideous. as well. <laughs> it's such a shame though isn't it that we you know we get to a certain age and we're slightly kind of looked over you know I always think you get to 50 and you you become slightly invisible don't you and it's a horrible feeling and and in actual fact it's kind of when as a woman you become what you what you've always meant to be I yeah. think you know you've got none yes. of that you, you're you can't have kids anymore so you really are just who you are meant to be you and think Sarah the invisibility comes from ourselves I've, I've thought about this quite a lot people say get invisible but I don't think you know I think you're a very sexy you know I think we're all very really good looking sexy women here and I yeah. think this invisibility is something that might have been ingrained into us because we've got to a certain age we feel we don't have to you know, perhaps look that good, perhaps take that much care. I mean, from an actor's point of view, I suppose I would say, you know, the parts that I play now are very much, I'm servicing somebody else's story. Do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. not telling my own story. I'm servicing somebody else's story. And that very much came into play when I became 50. And it's almost like people are saying or writers are saying, you know, OK, now you, you're you you're not the story anymore. You know, you can back up the story of the 30 year old or the 40 year old, but you're not the story. And in that way, I think we're more invisible. Do you know what I mean? I think it's that sort of just when we're at our peak, just when we're ready to, to, to go, look what I've learned and look what I've done over all these years. Look how great, I've, I'm still in the game, you know, I'm still here, is when people kind of go, oh, we're not really that interested anymore, which just seems such a shame because, you know, all the women that I meet now over 50 are brilliant, you know, they're so interesting, they're so full of life, they've got so much to say, they're so funny, they're so comfortable in their own skin, they're so sexy, but it's yeah. kind of, we're just not allowed almost. I think one we are the first generation who have had women's lib ahead of us. We've had birth control, we've had education. There's no one ahead of us to say what to do now. And mm. society certainly doesn't tell us. When we hit 50, as I've said, I was told to go on a saga cruise or uh, and, and <laughs> sort out my will and get a free pen. And I think so. How long did that live? I think I'll get <laughs> with MI5 because I've moved three times. Their leaflets still come through my door. That's all I'm saying. Oh, and somebody said, have you not got any grandchildren? I went, no. They went, oh. And I was like, I don't, I, I'd love to have grandchildren, but I don't need to be defined by it. Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't like to be defined by my grandchildren either. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, oh, Debbie, the grandma, I'm not a grandma. You know, my mother wasn't a grandma either. My mother was a pioneering woman. So I was very lucky to have a very strong pioneering woman as a mother who worked as well. People, so many people have said to me when my grandkids were born, are you gonna, how, you know, how lovely for you to start looking after them? And I said, well, who's gonna pay my bills then? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, exactly. how am I supposed to just be lovely grandma running around after my daughter, looking after her children. Meanwhile, I'll be starving to death. I do. It's weird. Yeah. We also become a sort of, we become a bit sort of sexless. That's what I get. I, that's what grinds my gears, girls. Yeah. Yeah. But do you have oh, any grind your gears? I, have one, I love that. I have one hormone. I have one hormone on trickle. So I, it's not that I don't, <laughs> seriously, if that. And I don't feel. I, like I've said to the girls, my bifolders have been shut for a long time, darling. I really can't <laughs> <be bothered. laughs> 
And I just, I, I mean, Debbie's full of verve and joie de vivre and, you know, I, I just yes. can't be... No, no, get that. And, and funny enough, that is a symptom of the menopause, the lack of libido. Yeah, no I mean, woman. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I, I was quoted in, um, I think it was the Daily Mail, I could have bloody killed the journalist, where I, she <laughs> asked me, well, what would I do? Because one of my huge crushes, just in case he's watching, is Idris Elba. And she quoted me as saying that um, if Idris Elba came to my front door, um, I would offer him a cup of tea and a hobnob. No. <laughs> Terrible. What? Of course you That's wouldn't. a bit drastic, darling. A bit drastic. <laughs> I think if I think offering the hobnob, it would not be one with chocolate on. Let me tell you. <laughs> is, and, and Sarah's right. You know, I feel that I went through a phase of not feeling very attractive about myself. Um, but I feel like I've slightly gone beyond that now because we live postmenopausally longer than we do premenopausally. Um, our bodies have been through. When I say hell, that sounds awful. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but um, adolescence and pubescence and, and menstruating and then giving but pregnancy was fun, wasn't it? Childbirth. <laughs> <laughs> I asked my mum once, what was childbirth like? And she said, stick an egg up your nose. <laughs> or, 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 as, or as Joan Rivers said, you know, what, what's birth like? You know, it's, it's, it's it, imagine somebody taking your bottom lip and pulling it over your head. Yeah. <laughs> so we've gone through all that. Then we've had puke all over us and then sleepless nights and then oh the joys of teenagers they're fun not <laughs> and so here we are and actually as Sarah said we are exactly where we're supposed to be and 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 we we our life expectancy is for another 30 40 years I fully intend to live mine and as we say, you know, there's, there's so much doom and gloom about the menopause out there. And, and, and there's lots of people obviously quite rightly fighting for our corner. But I sort of think actually there are so many solutions out there. It's about education. It is about, you know, people getting the knowledge. But also, the, and the one thing that I've received back in terms of feedback on my blog, I, I've got about three and a half, that, three, well, 300,000 followers. But the book wow. is blown off the shelves because People have written to me, I've had literally so many messages from people saying, thank you, I feel normal. Mm. Because actually, yeah. so much of it is funny. And the reality is, I mean, uh, bar Debbie and Debbie's mum, and <laughs> there, there, there kind of isn't a side door around it. Although, weirdly enough, my mum said, because my dad keeps saying to me, Emma, what do you do for a living? And I said, well, dad, <laughs> don't talk about the menopause. How much longer are you going to be able to say, <laughs> Your mother never went through it. And I said, this is when my, my darling mum was still alive. And I said, mum, you must have gone through it. She said, I did. I did go through it, Dave. She said, I went through it when I went to South Africa. And I said, mum, you were there for two weeks. <laughs> so crazy. It was a really similar set of things. But genu gen generally speaking, a lot of, you know, so there is no side door. Mm. But there are solutions. Yeah. And do you know what? Laughter is got, has got to be the best medicine. You know, I've, I've lost my mum this year. And this has been part of the reason for writing the books is that um, not, not that any, the books aren't sad in any way, shape or form. They're very real. But my, I lost my mum and then um, part, quite a lot of the book, I don't know whether any of you have read it, but involved my totally untrained Labrador called Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's infamous. And he was tragic put to sleep about eight, nine um, weeks ago. And, and, and we, I, I wrote a book called Spencer and Me. And it's not sad. It's not sad. It, don't read the last yeah. chapter if you don't want to cry, but <laughs> it's hilarious because of the stuff that he got me into. And actually for me, laughter is the only medicine when there isn't medicine, if you catch my drift. It, yeah. it's, but, you know, to find something funny mm. in something that you cannot change is- And it's something that every woman goes through. Yes. But I think it's, yeah. also, it's also to do with attitude because um, my mom, um, I had my menopause at 42, and I'm now 92 or 100, <laughs> I can't really remember. But um, my mum always said, um, she said, she was so angry that I would even mention the menopause. And she said, I didn't have the menopause ever, but I do remember when I was 13, that she went into sort of a madness, a crazy madness, and she wouldn't let me out of her sight. She had to be with me every second. She, and now I realise 
that that was her madness. Yeah. But um, when I got it, um, yeah. and, and I'm still at this age, still have night sweats. So I've had it virtually, you know, most big bulk of my life. And I've actually been known to go to bed with frozen peas and uh, <laughs> bottles of frozen Coca-Cola. <laughs> so that was the only way I could keep my body temperature down. And I've been in supermarkets and I've opened a freezer and I've virtually got in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> Until somebody came up and said, that is so unhygienic, can you please get out of the freezer? So that, was, that was my thing. But I actually used to go to bed with one frozen bottle of Coca-Cola, one frozen bottle of lemonade, either side. <gasps> That's By the morning, of course, I was wet and the bottles were very warm because I could heat up a bottle within seconds. Oh, That's my God. That's how bad oh. my oh. was. And can it's I been just, with me just, ever since. Can I just ask you, ladies, have any of you actually taken HRT? Yes. I yeah. do, yeah. I'm on the gels. I'm on these gels. So I have a gel that I rub in into my arms like that. And then I have a testosterone cream. Now here's a warning if you ever take this, don't put it on your bikini line. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That, she told me, she said, oh, you can put it. Um, she's a oh, lovely no. girl. She says, you can put it on your wrist. You can put it on your bikini line. So I put it on my bikini line. It was like being in the 1970s. I've never seen anything like it. So Emma, tell us about your books before yes. we, we have to, before we have to go because we've actually run out of time. I've got one. Believe it? I've got one. All right, tell us. Oh, that's so funny. Okay. Uh, it's, it's the first one, that, which it is probably it's called the Conf or Confessions of the Menopausal Mayhem Mother, and it's the story of my life, which started 20 years ago when my husband first left us, and it's about a life planned that goes horribly, horribly wrong, but it's hilarious. As in, I mean, when I say the book, it's just, it's, it's okay to not be okay. It's okay if you're, all your plans go wrong and you don't do the conventional thing. I mean, my mum used to introduce me to so many people for many, many years as this is Emma, she's divorced. That was my new husband. I mean, I mean my new surname. Mm -hmm. And so, just go with the flow and and do you know what it'll make you feel more real and there's only one person I laugh at. actually no there's two people I laugh at there's myself and, and now my my new husband who weirdly enough I've just seen him slumped on the back garden um <laughs> face down which is slightly worrying because the dog must have dug him up again <laughs> um, is, is, there, is there another book before you go and rescue your husband no, stop that. He'll be a <laughs> Yeah, please go and order a copy of the book, even if it's for a friend who's suffering or feeling a bit low. It is a, it's, it's a, it all, the only person I laugh at is me. Um, and my life has yes. been one cataclysmic catastrophe. So go for your life. It's a bit of fun. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, my mother always had very young boyfriends. And at 89, she had a boyfriend who was 40. So... I'm just yeah. putting it out there. Yeah, Joe Collins can do ever. it, so we. Say, I'm going to commission Emma and all of us to write a fabulous movie where, where we're centre stage and yes. we're not actually facilitating somebody else. Very good. Okay? Absolutely. That's our homework, darling. That's our homework. Okay, Fabulous. Fab. See you soon. Thank Bye, you guys. for having us. Bye. 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 That was amazing. Fabulous, wasn't it? Absolutely wonderful. So funny to have... They just, they just, their stories are so brilliant and we identify with so much of it. It's so yeah, fantastic. I know. How wonderful. Always. So I went to um, a party the other night, Tony McHale's party, and I met these two ladies and I've just found out that one of them was 82 and she's just uh, met somebody 30 years younger and is very happy. There you go. I'm not saying any more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's, we've got a long way to get to 82, but who knows? Anyway, guys, exactly. it's been a great, a happy Tuesday, and we will see you on Friday. Suzanne Chalkley, the nutritionist, and it's just oh. us girls together. Yes, with Suzanne. Yeah. Talking about nutrition, we've been very healthy yeah. this week. Menopause, nutrition. We have. We're changing. Give me the Baileys. That, and diets. <laughs> diets. She's talking oh, about diet. how to lose weight. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye, girls. Bye.
Dormeo, home of a great night's sleep.